Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about variables in LabVanced. I'm going to explain the difference between three kinds of variables, I'm going to explain elements versus user-created variables, and how we can use variables in triggers and actions to create events. First up, we have our three different kinds of variables. Trial variables are those that are recorded during the trial, and those are sampled most often. So things like participant responses or reaction times and things that are sampled multiple times during the trial. Session variables are only recorded once per session. So that's things like group number um, for if you have different groups in your study or things like um, the browser that is being used for that session. Things that are kind of global to the study. And then we have subject variables. Those are things that are only sampled once per subject. And those are typically not um, researcher or user participant controlled. Those are things that LabVanced automatically has. So like experiment subject number, which for a longitudinal study will remain the same as the subjects return for their different sessions. So those are our three broad categories of variables. Of course, there are several smaller categories of variables that I'll get to in a moment. So let's go over elements and user created variables. To create a variable, just a blank one to start your study, you can come over here in this top corner to the variables tab, and you can see this blank table that's going to become populated as we add variables to our study. So let's click this plus sign and click add variable. We're immediately prompted to name the variable, which is extremely important because if you have several variables with the same name, um, yourself and LabVanced are going to be confused about what's being measured where. So definitely unique names are very important. So I'm just going to call this variable one for these purposes. Next, you choose the format for your variable, which can be scalar, array, or data frame. Arrays and data frames have several values in them, kind of like a table that get populated every time something happens to that variable. We're just going to go with scalar for now because we just want one, one value in our variable. Next, you're prompted to select the data type, which is super important, which is why there's that exclamation point. You can leave it undefined, um, but it's recommended to pick a data type so that we know exactly what you're doing here. String just means it's a text value. Numeric is numbers. Boolean, true, false. Categorical, date, time, and file. So these are all kind of specific here. For these purposes, I'm just going to create a string variable, which just means that it holds some text. Next, you pick the scale, which will change based on the type that you chose. So for string, my options are a nominal, ordinal, or undefined scale. But if I click numeric here, you'll see I can choose between ordinal, interval, ratio, or undefined. So I'll just go back to string. I'm going to leave this undefined because that's no biggie. You can input a start value here. If you'd like the variable to have a start value, this is great for things like counters, where say you want to have a countdown on a frame, you'd put a numeric variable with a start value of, say, 30, and you could change it dynamically with events. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. You can also add a description. The participant will not see this. This is kind of for your purposes. If you'd like to remind yourself what your variable does, or if you have other researchers looking at your study, and you want to be a little bit more descriptive. Scrolling down, we have some more options for our variables. You can have this checked, which these are all checked by default. These are the settings. Reset at trial start just means every trial, that variable is going to go back to whatever you have it set in the default. So if you have a counter and you have it starting at 20, at the start of every trial, it'll go back to 20, regardless of what happened in the previous trial. So. We can leave that checked, but if you don't want it to reset, if you want it to change dynamically with events, you can just uncheck that box. You can also choose whether or not you want this variable to be recorded. Sometimes we use variables sort of as intermediaries to carry values from one event to the next. And if you don't actually need to know that value at the end of the study, you can just uncheck that box. It will be checked by default though. Finally, we have this view in global list option. I recommend keeping this on unless you have, you know, a very large number of variables that you know you're not going to need later. But this is super helpful if you're going to be using the same var variable value across the study and you want to call back on that variable 
later when you're working on a different task. Um, I'll show you the global list in a bit, but that's kind of how you see all the variables in your study that have been marked as global. Finally, when you choose to record the variable, you can choose to record all changes or the final value only. All changes creates a time series variable, and this is for things like eye tracking, head tracking, mouse tracking, anything where you need to see all of the values of that variable across time, which does output a lot of data. Or you can choose final value only, which just means, you know, like a participant input, whatever the ending value of the variable was at the end of the trial or the event series. So this is kind of a default variable. I'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see this gets added to our variables list. You can see that the type is unused because I haven't assigned this variable to an event or to an object. I just kind of have it sitting here. My data type is string as marked by these little letters here. Here's the name and I can copy or delete this variable. Please be careful when deleting variables. Um, as I'm sure you know, when you delete a variable, it could potentially change the whole course of your study, especially if that variable is used in lots of places. For that reason, not every variable is going to have this little trash can here because not every variable can be deleted, especially ones that are part of elements, which I'll show you in a bit. When I click on this variable in the menu, I can see all of the settings that I put in, as well as where this variable is used. So I can see that it's used in task one, which is what I'm in, in frame one, and in the local workspace, which just means it's here, it's added to my list, but it's not really anywhere. So if I call back on this variable in another task, this will populate with more places where it was used. Okay, so let's talk about elements and their variables. Some of our elements automatically prompt you to create a variable to hold their values. For example, these question elements here all prompt you to create a variable. So let's add a multiple choice element. Right away, I have to create a name for this variable. And when I add the question to my frame, you can see here in the object properties window it popped up. You can also see in the variables window, I got another variable here. It's used in an object, which tells you that it's part of one of our elements. It is a string variable, and it's what I named it. And as you can see, that trash can is not there. I can only copy this variable. Because if I delete this object, this variable gets soft deleted. So going in the object properties, make this a little bit clear. So we're looking at that choice one that I just named, the multiple choice object. If I scroll down to the bottom of those properties, this is where I can see my variable here. This is the variable I created. It's linked to that object. It is string. It's nominal and scalar, and it's going to record at the trial end. Here you can see the possible variable values. So this is where I can change, say I want option one to be apple, and I want option two to be orange. So this is what will get populated into this variable when the participant makes a selection. Just a quick side note here, notice that just because I changed the variable value here doesn't change it here. You have to change both. This is helpful if, say, you have like a sentence or a paragraph that they have to choose from and you have a code for yourself so you don't have to type that whole paragraph in here. You could just type one or two. So that's super helpful for that. So that's what a linked variable looks like in elements. And there's a couple elements that have this. Um, so again, just make sure that you have this variable value populated. Otherwise, it's just going to say option one, option two. So let's look at triggers and actions for variables. So we're going to go into the events tab. We're going to add a frame event. And we're just going to call this event one. I'm going to show you how to use a variable as a trigger. In trigger type, you can click that select button. Scroll down to this variable value changed. And what's going to happen is when that variable changes in some way, the value of it changes, we can add an action. So let's say when choice one changes, which by default doesn't have a value. So basically after they've selected one of the multiple choice options, I can add an action here that says maybe set object property, you know, draw a random number, even just jump to the next frame. So that's an easy way of using a variable as a trigger. And of course, you have our whole host of options here that can happen when that value changes. 
Another way you can use variables dynamically is you can use them as actions. So let's say I just want a mouse trigger. And let's say here. So what I've done is I've added a mouse trigger that when they click on that multiple choice element, something is going to happen. And this is the start of how to create a reaction time variable. For my action, I'm going to scroll down to variable actions and click set record variable. You can see now I have this option to hit the select button. I can choose one of the local variables, which means I've created them on this frame in this task. Or I can go to global variables. This is what I was talking about before, where these are all of the variable values that have been used globally in this study that I've selected to be added to the global list. As you can see, some of these I did not create, and that's because they're automatically created by our system. These are going to be those system variables that I was talking about, those uh, session values. So I've got subject number, which is just, you know, whatever order the subject started the study, trial number and trial ID, which are unique to this, and condition ID. These are all part of that um, factor tree that we create. So I can use one of these, or I can create a new one. For this, I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it RT for reaction time. It's scalar, and it's going to be numeric. I can leave everything else the way it is. Just pop that in there. And then all I have to do is click this pen icon. I'm going to use the mouse trigger, and it's going to be time from frame onset. You could also use Unix time for like a timestamp. But I find that reaction time variables, it's easy to just do time from frame onset. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me a numeric value of the milliseconds since the frame started to when they clicked a choice in that um, multiple choice element. And I can click finish and there's my variable event. Okay, so now that we've got a couple of variables built in here, let's go to the variables tab and take a look at this. So this is the variables tab, and this is where you can see all of the variables in your study, even if they're not used, just everything you've created, everything that the system's created, and they're sorted. So I've got custom variables, which are the ones that I created. So this var1 is when I hit the plus sign for add variable, and I didn't use it anywhere, but I just created it. And this is that reaction time variable that I created using that event. Then we have object variables. These are the ones that are automatically created when you add that object to your frame. That's that choice one, that multiple choice. I don't have any factor variables in this study, but you could if you added lots of factors to your task. And then these are all of our system variables. These are automatically created for your use. You don't have to use them. You don't have to export them as part of your data, but they're helpful for our system. And most of them are gonna be quite helpful for a lot of users. We have things like trial ID, which is the trial ID for the task. And we have subject codes, you know, start time local. All of these, as you can see, when you click on them, they come up with their settings and descriptions. So you can read through these and check and see if that's something that you want to be recorded. Um, highly recommend just recording all of these unless you really don't need it because they are super helpful when you're analyzing your data. If you notice, a lot of these settings are grayed out, which means that you cannot edit them, and that's because we've built them in a standard way for your use. Scrolling all the way down here, I can also show soft deleted variables, and that's because we don't really allow you to completely delete a variable just in case you need it later. Um, but if you soft deleted a variable, it will be shown here, um, which is helpful if, say, you accidentally deleted something and you needed to get that back or, you know, figure out how to build it again a different way. As you can see, we do have the option to bring back the soft deleted variables. Okay, before you publish your study, you do need to confirm all of your variables. And this is just saying that you've gone through this list, made sure everything you wanted to be recorded is being recorded, and confirms that everything you've built is working the way you intend it to do. We add all these little checks in here just to make sure that before you publish, you are absolutely ready to go with your study. So this is a nice little overview of the variables in LabVanced. If you have any questions, please message us, um, you know, reach out to us. And there's a lot of information about variables in that documentation, which you can get to from the Learn tab. So let us know if this was helpful.
and I look forward to seeing your studies.